Hi, I'm Lisa. A lot of learners of English ask me, which American accent do you teach? Aren't there different accents in the United States? And when you're watching American films and TV shows, or when you're listening to the news, which American accent are they speaking? Those are some of the topics that we will discuss in this video. In addition, you will hear a sample of different accents from different parts of the United States. And you will listen to my conversation with the perfect person who is very qualified to talk about this topic. Her voice is heard everywhere in the United States. She uses her voice professionally. She's most famous for being the voice of Siri on the iPhone. And she talks about what it means to have no accent when you're speaking American English. You will hear her talking about the different accents in the United States and how she got her first job in voiceover because she had no accent. We have a lot of things to talk about in this video. And as usual, after you listen to my conversation with Susan, I will come back and I will teach you the different expressions we were using. Let's get started. When one native speaker tells another native speaker of English, you don't have an accent, what does that mean? That means the person is speaking with a non-regional accent. It's also called a neutral accent and also known as the standard American accent. It means that the listener doesn't know which part of the United States the person is from. That's why it's called a neutral accent. It's also called broadcaster speech or a broadcaster accent. This is the accent that you will hear when you watch the news. Generally, when you hear newscasters speak, you can't recognize which part of the United States they're from. It's the most common American accent. Here's a good explanation that I found online. It is the continuum of accents called General American, which is spoken by a majority of Americans and popularly perceived as lacking any distinctly regional, ethnic, or socioeconomic characteristics. Many actors who come to Los Angeles from other parts of the United States work hard to reduce their regional accents because they need to have the standard, general, neutral sounding American accent. A well-known television journalist, Linda Ellerby, said this about her job. In television, you're not supposed to sound like you're from anywhere. Another definition of a general standard American accent is it doesn't fall under any of the following categories. It's not an Eastern New England accent, especially Boston, and it's not a New York accent, and it's not a Southern accent. Generally, if a person doesn't have one of those accents, they sound more neutral. It's difficult to recognize where they're from. However, if you ask a linguist, a specialist in accents, they will be able to distinguish those little differences. Maybe if someone is from a different city or a different state, they pronounce the vowels differently or there's a slightly different melody to their speech. Now let's listen to my conversation with Susan Bennett. Let's listen to her talk about her job and demonstrate some different American accents. And then I will come back and I will teach you some expressions that she and I were using that I think will be valuable for you to know. And I was very involved in music. I joined um, a sort of uh, jazz band and I was also singing jingles at different uh, recording studios. And one day the voice talent didn't show up to sing for one of the jingles that we had sung for this particular product. And so the owner of the studio said, Susan, you don't have an accent. Come over here and read this copy. And I did, and I went, oh, ding, 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 I can do this. So I got a voice coach and then a talent agent, and I've been doing that ever since. You said uh, you had no accent. A lot of my students say, Lisa, which accent do you teach? I tell them that I teach the standard American accent. Right, yeah. Do you have any thoughts that you'd like to share about what that is? How would you describe a standard American accent or no accent? Well, I think a neutral accent is one, well, just that, absolutely neutral. People can't detect which part of the U.S. you're from? I don't think they can. Uh, I had an interesting experience as a young child. I w was born in Vermont, lived in Massachusetts and Rhode Island, and I had a very thick New England accent. Fortunately for me, for my future voiceover self, my parents moved to upstate New York, and their accent is much uh, less pronounced. It's very... Uh, 
flat sounding and it's and it starts to sound midwesterny <clears throat> much more so than the new england accent so the new england accent is very very thick and very very specific very subtle it's a very you know it's not just pack my car and have it yet it's there's a pack my cat and have it yet you know there's a little right. y sound in front i mean there's very subtle differences in all these different accents and so i think when you say that you're teaching the standard american accent what you mean is that there are no clear exaggerated sounds like i know in pittsburgh they say over instead of over either mm -hmm. i think it's just some of the some of the vowel sounds they have the farther west you go the the flatter sounding mm -hmm. you know the accent is there are some pretty strong accents in the northeast yes you know, the, the new england accent is very strong as well uh you went in the south of course that's very you know, my my husband is southern and he doesn't even put an s in word like doesn't you know, stud. So to me, a, a standard American or neutral accent is, is an accent without all of those exaggerated sounds. Do you have to be careful not to pick up some habits from the people that are around you? For example, your husband or I think you live, do you live in Atlanta? Or? Yes, I live in Atlanta. Um, yeah. If there's a certain way of talking, are you careful not to take on that accent or are you just so comfortable with your own accent that that doesn't affect you? I, I was aware of moving to the South and not wanting to uh, get that accent. Uh, I don't think about it on a daily basis anymore because I, I have done so much work and I might, and I have a good ear. I have a musical ear. And so I can pretty much tell if I'm slipping into something or if I hear something played back, I'll go, oh, I better be careful about, about the endings of those words. And back when I first started to record, we were recording on tape which meant that, um, for instance, I worked for a message company and as many times we'd have to read a whole paragraph through without any kind of mistake because it was so much more difficult to edit tape than it is to edit digitally now yeah. um, that the talent was expected to just be able to read it cold through correctly. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is no longer the case, you know, because of technology, we are able to fix things and improve things and <laughs> change them entirely almost. Let's listen to the way Susan used the word jingle. And I was also singing jingles at different re uh, recording studios. Susan said she was singing jingles in different recording studios. Jingles are short songs used in advertising. It's a small piece of music to make you remember the product. Do you remember some jingles from when you were a child? Here's a McDonald's jingle that I remember. You deserve a break today at McDonald's. To all be patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, and a sesame seed bun. The word copy has several different meanings. Let's listen to the way Susan used it. This one is related to advertising and marketing. And so the owner of the studio said, Susan, you don't have an accent. Come over here and read this copy. Copy is the content, the text, the material that is used in advertising. Voiceover artists like Susan read copy. When talking about an accent, Susan used the word pronounced. Fortunately for me, for my future voiceover self, my parents moved to upstate New York and their accent is much uh, less pronounced. It's very um, flat sounding. She said in upstate New York, their accent is much less pronounced. And that means much less noticeable. So pronounced means noticeable. Upstate New York means the area outside of New York City in the state of New York. That's upstate New York. And in that region, they have a less pronounced accent. And let's listen to a demonstration of the New York accent. Let's listen to Craig, who's an actor who moved to Los Angeles from the New York area, and he needed to neutralize his accent. I don't want people to kind of stereotype me or typecast me as New York characters for everything. So I've really focused on being as neutral as possible. That way I can fit a bunch of different roles rather than just the East Coast ones. My acting coach pointed it out and she said that, you know, I really need to make it as subtle as possible. So she helped me and it's something that I still work on all the time. It's really working on the aw sound. You know, when you say dog, you know, that's not as bad as it used to be. A lot of New Yorkers will say dog or coffee or walk or I'm going to walk the dog to get some coffee. How about water? Or, or water, you know? Yeah, awe. It's that awe sound. That's what makes New Yorkers really stand out. 
awe, awe, awe. He says it's about the awe sound. And very often the differences between regional accents are related to the vowel sound differences. And that awe sound is a classic example of a New York accent. And Susan talked about the pronunciation of park my car in Harvard Yard. Very subtle. It's a very, you know, it's not just pack my car and have it yet. It's, there's a pack my car and have it yet. You know, there's a little right. Y sound in front. I mean, there's very subtle differences in all these different accents. When people want to imitate the Boston accent, they usually say this sentence. And that's because the sentence contains the ah sound, which in Boston is much bigger. It sounds more like ah. And then the R tends to be silent. So the A-R, park, car, Harvard, yard. Those four words have the A-R combination and people from Boston pronounce it quite differently. Here is a video of a man from Boston saying the sentence, park my car in Harvard Yard. He wanted to find out if Siri on the iPhone would be able to understand what he said. Can I park my car in Harvard Yard? I'm not aware of any appointments about haven't yet. So as you can see, Siri sometimes doesn't understand a non-standard American accent. So if Siri doesn't understand you, don't worry about it. Sometimes even native speakers are not understood by Siri. I'm from California and a lot of people would say the Californians don't really have a regional accent. They sound more neutral. But sometimes you will hear some people from some regions of California, especially along the coast near the beach. They have a certain sound where the vowels are particularly big. They're really open. Here's a funny example of that where people are imitating the California accent on the show Saturday Night Live. They are really exaggerating the California accent. They're making the vowels really big. And you will hear the famous rock and roll singer Mick Jagger, who is from England, doing that California accent. The Californians. I'm your dad. What? <laughs> but there's one more thing. You have a brother. Devin? What are you doing here? I'm your bro. Bro. My sons. That video was exaggerating the California accent. It was making fun of some people from Los Angeles who open their mouth a lot when they're speaking. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with the regional dialect. People can still speak English correctly, no matter which accent they have. However, the most common accent that you will hear in the United States is a non-regional accent, the standard American accent. And if you would like to learn all of the rules of a good, clear, standard American accent, make sure you get my online course that teaches you all the rules that you need to know. It consists of seven hours of video lessons. You can learn all of the English vowel sounds and the difficult consonant sounds. And of course, very important part is the rhythm and melody of English and the intonation and the word stress. Thanks for watching and keep practicing your English. To get the two courses, the American Accent Course and the 400 advanced words you must know for fluent English, go to accurateenglish.com.